All right. Now, so this next game, we'll try this out too. We'll see if this is any good. This is another CD-ROM from back in the day. And it's like a David Bowie interactive CD-ROM. I'll explain it better if you give me just a second. Okay. Includes four full videos, animations, rare photos, hidden surprises. So here's some music that Bowie wrote for this game. <laughs> anyway, it's called Jump. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, I don't know, I, I've never heard of this before today. So let's see. It's an interactive CD-ROM experience. It also runs on Windows 3.1. I'm just reading what Sphinx wrote. And uh, here's a little quote. Okay, so... Apparently Bowie was really into the CD-ROM thing. And then he hated it when CD-ROMs actually happened. This is a quote from him. I hated it. I absolutely loathed it. There were aspects of it I thought had potential, but then again, there was so much information on the disc itself that it made the idea of anybody using it interactively a joke. Interactive, as far as I'm concerned, is when the person who's operating the computer has as much to say as what's on the screen. That is interactive. At the moment, it's just the ABC options. Even the most sophisticated CD-ROMs are just, here's the hard information. Now, take one of these three steps. Interesting. So, don't expect much. Bowie shit on his own game. Or interactive experience. And then later made Omicron? Ugh. Man, I hope the music is an 80s Bowie. I really hope it's nothing from, like, tonight. kind of is. I'm not very familiar with 80s Bowie or early 90s. I like 95 on and anything before. Anything Let's Dance in before. Up in the elevator. You want to play my CD ROM game, Vinny? I don't even sound like this, I never did. Just choose one of three options. Yeah, this is early 90s Bowie. Oh no. This was his fat Elvis period. You know, self-described. No mix recorded. What am I, what am I doing? Are we we're doing like? Like a fake mixer? I guess it's kind of cool for a CD-ROM game. Again, you kind of... You kind of have to take into account the technology available at the time. What the fuck would you do if you're like... 
a music guy and you're trying to take advantage of new technology. Bowie was also one of the first people to like do his own like community online. Like he had a Vine Sauce before Vine Sauce. Look up the history of Bowie Net if you have any interest. Now this isn't this is gonna be more chill stream for the rest of the night. So if you're expecting like craziness, uh, it might not be tonight, but Maybe after the Bowie thing, but I'll say that um, Bowie had this thing, yeah, called Bowie Net. He had forums, he had a chat room. This was like late '90s. This is just as AOL is starting to get big, and um, he would post, he would shit post on his own forums using the name Sailor and other names, and he would also post under his own name, and people would know who he was, and he would take the piss out of himself. He would. He would shit on his bad music. Oh man, it's just a shame it's this era of Bowie. God. But yeah, this reminds me a lot of the museum I went to. Uh, Brooklyn Museum that has the Bowie exhibit. When it comes to shaking man in his eyes. Yeah, just mute, Strike mute that shit. Wow. What do I get to play different songs? Can I can I get one of your songs from the seventies, David? No. No. You can only play this one song, Vinny. It's just this one song. That's it, it's just this one. Um, how about Life on Mars? Can I get that? No. No, 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 you get jump, they say. That's all you get. 1993. Jump, they say. Well, David, you know, we're making this game and we would really love to include some of your legacy work. You know, we've... We know a lot of your fans are probably really interested in, in Ziggy and, uh, and Heroes and... You know, stuff from... Wow. Bowie was not kidding when <laughs> he said the CD-ROM thing was loathsome. I love it, though, anyway. I mean, this is great for me. I love taking, like, a historical trip through gaming. Anyway, anyway. So, yes, David, we were thinking about getting some of the Ziggy stuff in there. You know, you got plenty of videos. We got a lot of songs to choose from. You have this huge catalog. No, no, you're gonna do my 1993 song, Jump, they say. Uh, oh, that one. All right. That's it? 1993, Jump They Say. Was Jump They Say his only hit in the 80s and 90s? I'd never even heard the song before, to be honest. Mr. Bowie? Mr. Bowie, you there? Bowie? Oh, yeah. Tell me more. It's an interactive shit show. No, he had a lot of hits in the 80s. He had, like, it, hits does not equal good music, though, necessarily. I like Blue Jean. Um, he had a couple songs in the early 90s that, you know, charted, but he often loathed his 80s period. Um, and, he, and, and Let's Dance is a great album. I love that album. That one he's, you know, he always liked. I like that. It's just after that, it, it gets rough. Oh my god. The sad thing is, right after this album, the very next album he put out, Outside, is actually kind of amazing. Went on tour with Trent Reznor from Nine Inch Nails. Oh, I 
I've never even heard that song before. I don't think I want to hear it. Wow. It seems Bowie was dabbling in porn music in the early 90s. I loathed it. I hated it. I thought it was a bunch of bullshit. This reminds me way too much of the manhole game. No. No! What's the- what is the point? Macrobiotic, a diet system inspired by the Zen sect of Japanese Buddhism. Huh. Ready for more porn music? I mean, you know, you guys know that Bowie is like my favorite. I- I don't know this video. I don't know these songs. This is like, the Dark Ages. This is like a missing period... ...in my Bowie knowledge. I could I couldn't even tell you what the fuck is happening right now! <laughs> That's a gif right there. I will say, if you do want to get into his music, I would highly recommend these albums to start. Hunky Dory. Ziggy Stardust. Heroes. Scary Monsters. I'm trying to think. What would be good starting albums? Probably those. Probably those as, like, starting albums. And then... Lodger is a pretty good one, too. Anyway, Low is my favorite. Uh, Diamond Dogs is great, but I would say if you're going to start, start with those. Pud. You kind of can't go wrong with anything from 70... 70 to, like, Let's Dance. All the way through there is just amazing. And then his last two albums before he died are great. And he had some good stuff in the 90s. But, um... Anyway, yeah, maybe Ziggy's the best one to start with. I wonder what the design philosophy behind a game like this was. Like, did they just... Like, okay, we, we're gonna put an object over here. We're gonna take some pictures. You can still see, like, the blue screen not fully cut out around the lamp and the table. But... Just anything you can see, you can click, quick, do something with it. I wonder if this was mind-blowing when it came out, you know? Like, I just don't remember. I remember playing a lot of stuff in computer class and then, you know, later playing like point and clicks with story. Corn. What kind of corn? Oh, you know, just all corn. Every corn. Hello, welcome to my game. It's really stupid. I know pretty much what the rhythm track should sound like, but... Everything that I do musically has to be something that I feel absolutely happy with artistically. That if I 
have a sense of uh, pleasure and fulfillment with it, then that is the work that I had intended doing in the first place. Definitely didn't happen in the 80s. Or maybe it did. Cocaine's a hell of a drug. It's the texture of the song, for me, which almost comes above the lyrical content. It's not, I don't have great passionate things I want to say lyrically. The whole mass of sound becomes a texture and hopefully an ambience and, and a kind of atmosphere. I, wonder, I want music to create uh, an alternative or a, a counter atmosphere. It's the sexes in the rhythm. And being a very sexual person, that's very important for me, that it moves me. Oof. Oh boy, I haven't seen these interviews. Oof. <laughs> hey, hey, I want to point out, if you watch Bowie interviews from the late 90s, it's a lot less, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? What is this? What would I call this? There's, there's got to be a word for this. I've the vocabulary so many times of the alien or the outsider or the person on the periphery of events. I mean, really, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of trying to make objective... Tacky. ...that which was in, incredibly subjective, actually. Mm. And it manifested itself through these sort of... Devices. <laughs> the desert My just said Bowie's horny on Maine. <laughs> sort of science fiction-y, alienated, isolationist. The isolationist. Which, of course, is one soul. You know, and sort of every, all the events that surrounded and happened to that isolationist person or in fact the events of my own life okay so the funny thing is the outsider his next album after this game and these interviews was the album outside and it's like that perspective and it's an excellent album it's i think probably his best from the 90s and uh i really like it so i mean clearly he was on to something he was getting there but uh yeah this is kind of funny to me i think everything it's a labyrinthine existence that we live, and so that it makes sense for me to put together elements in a song which wouldn't naturally be good bedfellows, pieces of information that don't naturally gel well with each other. Um, so I'll write on three or four different subject matters and then integrate them together by cutting them up and, and using that as a device for further stimulation. <laughs> so when you go to the museum, the... Bowie exhibit has a bunch of like interviews scattered about and uh, you can walk up to the TV and the Bluetooth headset will play the interview and you can hear what he's talking about. You can move over two feet to the left and another one will play. And um, yeah, these interviews are not on that exhibit. I know pretty much what the rhythm track should sound like. But once that that's accomplished, I really leave it up to the top level uh, lead musicians to push themselves as far as they can. If you hear an accident three times, it's an arrangement. It takes on a different context entirely. If you hear it once, it's an accident. But if the same mistake happens three times, the mind tells you it's a road map to follow. But if I feel a little unsafe where I'm going, then I'm in going in the right direction. And if, I fe if I'm feeling comfortable with what I'm doing, something's wrong. Uh, that's a, I like that one. He always said that. Uh, someone earlier said, this is midlife crisis, Bowie. After he made it past the midlife crisis, he wrote some good stuff again. Generally, I think the subject matter has always come back to the singular question of nearly every artist, which is, what's my relationship with the universe? What, whatever other form it takes, that's basic. I think that's probably the essential question that all of us ask ourselves. It looked really good for almost 50. For me, popular music doesn't create any new values. It merely reflects the ones that society holds true at the time. The strong messages and the muscle. Okay. Yeah, I think I've had enough of that. I think black tie, white noise, it refers to uh, a very obvious, uh, the racial... White noise itself is something... There's no revolution without violence. It's not a soft... <laughs> oh, boy. This was Bowie's pretentious period, wasn't it? Dear God. Is that it then? That's it. Huh. Oh. 
Well, that was um, that was abysmal. <laughs> what does this scene mean? Wow. Let's see. Uh, I hated it. I absolutely loathed it. There are aspects of it I thought had potential, but then again, there was so much information on the disc itself that it made the idea of anybody using it interactively a joke. Now, um, I think it's fascinating. I thought it was very interesting. I didn't know this existed. Uh, it's a shame it happened during the least interesting period of this dude's career and life. I mean, I'm sure he was happy. I'm sure there's like substance to a dude's life aside from what they put out uh, commercially, but it's like an attempt to make a little something in the CD-ROM format. If I made the Vinesaw CD-ROM game, I would just sit there and I would be like, yeah, you know, if you want to have a revolution in streaming, you got to hit it hard, man. You got to hit it hard. You know, go against everything that there is. You know, stream a lot of CD-ROM games. Hit it hard, man. Hit it hard. Uh, but no, I, I definitely think that um, tonight's representation of both Monty Python and David Bowie was... It was like as misguided as the genre itself. It was a nice attempt to do something interactive using the technology. Ultimately, a step in a direction that didn't quite go anywhere, huh? I mean, it all led to where we are now, but we don't quite have a lot of, um, let's say, interactive experiences on CD-ROM or other... Well, we have walking simulators now, so never mind. But, you know, not the predominant genre. Um, same thing for live action. We don't see a lot of that. But I actually wanted to do some more DOS games. I have a couple in mind and uh, adamant arc vile had a couple in mind too well dude has the entire ms dos library um and i'm assuming some of that is like stuff from cd rom from the 90s but no i sphinx i think this is stuff is really interesting and i like seeing it i like being able to stream it don't know how sunday material it was but it was probably worth a shot and so i can't complain too much about that what i'm going to do next is I'm going to give you a little something. Let me wake you up. Let me bring you back to life. If you have any interest in doing such a thing. I don't. I'd rather be... Well, I'd rather be asleep at the moment. It's almost my bedtime. But... Here's a little something for you. <laughs> 